Windows codename Longhorn, build 4051, is a milestone 7 alpha build compiled on the 20th of October 2003 of what was to become Windows Vista. This build of Longhorn is known as the Public Developer Preview and was the first Longhorn build to be made available to developers outside of Microsoft for testing. The build was distributed as part of the Professional Developers Conference 2003, a forerunner to Microsoft's build conferences, where software developers are invited to learn about upcoming releases of the Windows operating system and showcasing topics of interest to those developing hardware and software for new versions of Windows. With the first Professional Developers Conference taking place in mid-1992, where the world first heard about the Win32 API... Good morning. Welcome to the Windows 32 Developers Conference. The first mention of Windows codename Chicago, which later became Windows 95, and where developers got their hands on an early version of Windows NT 3.1, the 2003 event attracted an unprecedented amount of demand and introduced the world to Microsoft's grandiose plans for the next major release of Windows, Windows codename Longhorn. Let's now take a look at just some of the new information that was revealed about Longhorn at this event, starting with an introduction by Bill Gates himself. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Software Architect for the Microsoft Corporation, Bill Gates. Thank you. Well, welcome to the Longhorn PDC. Uh, we've been looking forward to this event for a long time. It was fantastic to see the response uh, to this event. The PDC has really ushered in a lot of uh, very important milestones. Uh, for example, the um, uh, PDC uh, in 1992 was really sort of the 32-bit uh, PDC. Uh, the PDC in 1996 uh, was the Internet PDC. Uh, the PDC in the year 2000 was the beginning of the uh, idea of XML and web services coming to the center. Uh, well, there'll be no doubt what this PDC is about. It's about uh, the next generation Windows and all the things we're doing around that uh, to make sure that brings computing to a whole new level. Microsoft talks about this decade as the digital decade. What we mean by that is that activities like listening to music, uh, organizing your photos, uh, annotating those, sharing them, uh, buying products, uh, all of these things will be dramatically driven by software in a way that they were not at the start of the decade. That means the visualization being richer and more engaging, uh, means taking reading and having it be very attractive on the screen. The hardware level is key here. These qualitative changes where desktop displays will be either very large or multi-screen. You know, three 21-inch LCDs or a single 26-inch LCD. And so we have to think about managing the windows and letting people see a lot more than they can today. The graphics processor I mentioned will be a lot better there. So we can use all of this for ink, animation, uh, sound processing, a, a different way of uh, interacting uh, with the, the, uh, the system. Two examples that I like here, uh, a consumer example is managing your memories. Not just your photos, but all of the timeline and schedules and annotations and movies that you make and making those rich and, and easy to navigate. That's something that people are interested in and it unifies a lot of things that have been separate. Until we had a lot of uh, this database technology, we couldn't unify those things. The photo application stored things its way, the sound application its way, and they were not, not brought together. So it's going to come together in Longhorn. Uh, this is our next major release. Uh, Jim will make sure it's, it's very clear we're at the beginning of this process. You know, we're opening it up to you, uh, showing you what we're thinking because we need your feedback. Uh, we need uh, your involvement to get this right. Uh, this is going to be a very big release, the biggest release of, the, of this decade, the biggest since uh, Windows 95. Uh, we're tackling three different areas. The fundamentals, uh, that means the security, the, the auto installation, applications not interfering with each other. Being able to connect up, being able to uh, have your information appear on all your different devices. 
having that information structured without you doing a lot of work. Having less commands despite the new richness that's there. Here's the simple diagram of Longhorn. You'll see this many times over the course of the next few days. Avalon's the presentation system. Uh, this is, is, is a timely advance. Uh, GDI, user, now those are cool things. But those were really architected with memory limitations and graphics limitations from a long time ago. We're even seeing some applications go around and use DirectX like Movie Maker does to try and get a, a new level of visual capability. But it's time we brought that all into the mainstream. WinFS, uh, this is unified storage. Uh, some of you here have heard me talk about unified storage uh, for more than a decade. Uh, that's been a, a holy grail for me uh, for quite some time. And here it is. Uh, thank goodness uh, we've got the, the powerful systems to be able to do this. Thank goodness we have the evolution around uh, XML and, and user interface capabilities uh, so that this, this can all come together. The final point is we want your involvement in telling us uh, what we've got right with Longhorn, what we've got wrong with Longhorn. Uh, we've got years of work here and it's going to be shaped uh, by your involvement in the community activities. And we've done a lot of new things. Uh, including the ways we've refined this event, getting our developers online, to really make sure that the community component drives Longhorn to be exactly what it should be. So I'm excited about the opportunity, uh, thrilled to have you all here uh, kicking off the Longhorn generation. Uh, so I want, want to invite the person who's really uh, driving the user interface to come together uh, to give you a look. Uh, so let me ask Halal Cooperman to come up and uh, give you uh, a sense of what Longhorn's all about. Morning, hello. Good morning, thanks, Ken. Here it is. Let's open up a window. See how that comes in. A couple things are going on here. First, there's a new look. And as excited as we are about that, and we, we hope you think it's uh, exciting and, and, and beautiful and professional, uh, but it's still early. The most exciting part is that making a new look is relatively easy. Building this deep into the platform is part of the uh, platform that you get to take advantage of. That's tough, and we've been, that's what we've been working on. So if you notice, uh, things like the transparency that we have here on the windows, watch as I move this kind of under this guy on the side. You can see it in the background there. Let me open up a couple more windows. Watch how these actually animate onto the screen. And this is using things that are part of Avalon, like Bill talked about, uh, including things like uh, pixel shaders, the desktop composition, all this advanced graphics functionality that to date has been typically in the domain of game developers, now available to actually render UI right on the desktop and, of course, in your applications. It's for me to walk you through some of the UI decisions we made and show you how we made them and show you how we took the principles that we talked about before and applied them. So this is an example of building a playback part right there in the sidebar. Uh, and anybody could go build one of these. But the interesting thing about it is, I want you to notice what happens as I hover over. You get this visualization of the audio coming out of your system when I'm not hovering over, but when I hover, all of a sudden the controls and the text are there. Reducing the clutter on the screen, taking things away until the user is right there is actually a very powerful thing. It's one way, one technique that we use to go make things simple and powerful. And it's just a, a tiny little example, but I show it to you to illustrate the kind of things we're talking about. All right, so now let's dive into uh, the storage here. So here we are in this sort of root storage place. Notice, by the way, again, a simple little thing about thinking about how users think about the software in front of them in their environment. This window is maximized. You may have seen some of the transparency effects that are currently in the, the, the current iteration of the look and feel. Watch what happens when I restore this window then it gets transparent. The theory is and, um, that when you maximize, what's your goal? Your goal is to get rid of all distractions. So why would you want to see anything behind the window you're looking at? And again, it's a small detail, but it is the small details when you think about those principles that add up to making it you know, a positive user experience. Al Vermeulen is here from uh, Amazon. Al, want to come out and show us cool stuff? Great. All right, thanks, Jim. 
Are you starting to see kind of the possibilities of what you'll be able to build with Longhorn and Avalon and Indigo and these things? You're starting to kind of get excited about this stuff. What I'm doing here um, is that we got together with some folks from Microsoft and some folks from Amazon, oh, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, just to talk a little bit about what we're doing at our respective companies. The Microsoft folks, they told us about Longhorn, a lot of the things that we're seeing here, and started thinking, well, um, how is it that we can create innovative new things using Avalon and WinFS, these rich client technologies, to create interesting shopping experiences for our customers. And what I'll do first is fire up the uh, Amazon rich shopping application. This is just a demonstration that we put together. And you can see right away, just as we fire this up, that this is not your normal HTML web page. Right, we've got some video happening here. That's kind of cool. Um, we've got this shopping cart control, so you can sort of check out what's in your shopping cart at any time without having to go and and uh, you know actually change to a different web page. That's kind of neat. Let's actually uh, use this thing now to buy something. And so we'll go ahead and search for digital camera. What's happened while I was talking is that the application, this rich shopping application, has hit Amazon's web services asked for digital camera, uh, and then gone and retrieved all of the rich information we have, about 300 cameras that match that search criteria. It took all of that rich information and stuck it into WinFS so that we could have Avalon controls that could then you know, quickly and easily go ahead and search through that information and find things. And we could do some basic sort of filtering things here. We can get detail information on any camera. Now to buy this, again, we'll just do a, a nice simple graphical metaphor. We'll grab this thing and we'll just drag it over here into the shopping cart. There we go. That's kind of fun. And now to check out, all we have to do is push the button. One of the things I want to point out here is that all of this stuff is real. Okay? This is all real code. So Amazon Web Services, this all works today. You can go home and write these kind of applications on top of the Amazon platform. And you can use the, uh, the Longhorn bits once they're available to actually build this kind of UI. What else can we do? We, we, like I said, we came up with a lot of things. The other one I'm going to show to you right now um, involves the calendar control. And this is the idea that at Amazon we have lots of uh, uh, you know, products that, that release all the time. And it's a big deal to people to know when do products release. So we can go ahead and get that data, again, from Amazon Web Services and display it on this nice camera. So this is kind of nice. What I really would like to do, though, is see how this fits in with my personal life, if I'll have time to buy, th you know, to actually watch these movies and so on. So I can overlay my calendar on top of this calendar. What's interesting about this, you heard Jim talk about this already, it used to be very difficult to get at my calendar information because it was buried somewhere in Outlook or in Exchange or something. I don't know, it was hidden way down there. And there's probably a lot of people in this crowd who are smart enough to know how to get that stuff out and dig it out of there and put it on, on this page but it's difficult for mere mortals. Well, with WinFS, it's easy because that data is exposed. So here we are in Longhorn Build 4051, and this was the build that was distributed to developers attending the Professional Developers Conference 2003. This build is different to the build that was actually used in the demonstrations at the PDC Conference 2003. So the build shown there uh, for the Amazon app, for example, was actually built 4050, uh, but this build is 4051, which is slightly different. Um, now, two of the main things that were discussed at the PDC conference were Avalon and WinFS. Now, I haven't really talked about those. Avalon, I'm not going to discuss much more in this video. I'm going to come back to that in a few videos' time. WinFS, however, I am going to discuss, and I'm going to start with that in this build. So in this build, if you go into the computer folder, you'll see that there's by default this location here called default store. And if you double click on it, it seems a little bit um, mystical really, but actually this is the WinFS file system um, and it actually works in this build. So I'll show you what, what kind of things you can do really with this. So this is basically like the libraries in Windows Vista and Windows 7. It's like a virtual disk space and what you do is you go and get yourself some files. Um, let's just go into there. So I'll leave that there and let's just imagine that I've just connected a digital camera and I've got some pictures here that are just in a random folder on my computer and I don't really know what to do with them. Uh, I'm just going to 
put them anywhere on my computer. I'm not really bothered about spending or wasting time trying to put them anywhere specific. And WinFS will just catalog them for me. So if I just drag these into default store, and what's happened now is WinFS has detected that those are picture files and it's now automatically added them to my pictures folder. So if I go to photos and videos now, those four pictures are now in this folder. Okay, and this is like I said, like the libraries in Vista and 7, this is a virtual location. So it's not actually a folder, one single folder on the hard disk. This is a virtual folder which as long as I drag them into this folder here will catalogue all of my photos and videos so they all appear in the same place. Now you can do exactly the same thing with uh, music for example so I'll just show you that as well. So let's just drag these two files into the WinFS folder and now if I go into music they will appear in my music folder. Now remember this music folder, this virtual folder, is not the same as this one. Okay, this is actually a folder called sample music in the shared music folder on my hard disk and it has an actual shell location. Okay, this is a real folder. This one is completely virtual. Okay, if I click up there I just get music. So another thing in this build which is a consequence of WinFS working is when you go to the games folder you get these new style icons for all of the games which are now different to the XP icons and the reason that you can tell this is because of WinFS is because if you turn WinFS off in the task manager which I'll do now and then reopen the games folder the icons actually revert to their XP equivalents like this so that icon, new icon functionality there is again to do with the new WinFS file system. So that's a very, very simple demonstration of the kind of things that you can do with WinFS. So this build is a little under two months older than build 4042. Uh, so there are not really many changes. And if you go back and have a look at the 4042 video, a lot of the wizards, for example, that I've shown there are also functional in this build. So I'm not going to show those again. I'm just going to concentrate on showing you the few new things that do appear. So one of these things is if you go to an Explorer window like this one, and if you compare this to in 4042, you get some new quick links here at the top in the task pane. So if I click burn to disk, for example, I get now to the burn to disk wizard. So that is once again attached to the user interface. I've got a quick link for add remove programs here which takes me to where you'd expect me to go and a quick link for search which is also by the way up here. So let's go into another folder. So in my documents folder I've got a few different ones now. So I've got make a new folder, um, some information about what a shared folder is. I can publish a folder using the web publishing wizard. I can share the folder. There you go. Let's go into pictures. So in pictures I've got play slideshow. You go. I've got print photos. I go to this photo printing wizard. Email photos and videos, which takes me to Outlook Express. Close that. Share order prints online. So order prints online takes me to this wizard. And I've got a few more there, as you can see. I've got a set of screensaver as well. So let's have a go at that. Alright, so that's not working at the moment, but it looks like the functionality was intended to be there to actually set these pictures as a screensaver from the pictures folder. Um, let's try and make a movie. That's not working either, but again, that would eventually, I'm assuming, take you to um, the Avalon version of Movie Maker, where you could make a movie with those. So that's one new thing in this build. Now another one, we're going to have to go to IE to see this. So this is still IE version 6, however it has a lot of new features which would eventually appear in XP Service Pack 2, which came out not long after this build was compiled. So these are the following, a download manager, the ability to clear your browsing records, 
a pop-up blocker as well, also an add-on manager. Now, obviously, perhaps, there are no add-ons at the moment, there's just the add-on manager. But obviously this um, tells us that Microsoft were, at this stage, already thinking about the ability to have add-ons in IE, and again, as I said, that came in XP Service Pack 2 eventually as well. Interestingly though, this is still IE version 6, which makes that extra interesting. The sidebar in this build, again, has a very slim selection of tiles. The only difference is that this build does not have the people tile. Now, one thing that I didn't mention last time, but, but which was present there, and I'm going to just give a quick shout out to Andrew who sent me an email with a bit of information about this build that he discovered himself and this is one of these things um, that I also noticed as well it's this option here show window preview on hover now it's grayed out so you can't actually turn that on but it does suggest that at this stage um, that functionality which is in Aero had already been um, thought of so Microsoft were thinking about introducing that window preview functionality which is in Windows Vista and Windows 7. Another feature in this build and again this is something which has been present previously but I haven't actually shown yet is the migration wizard. So this would become the file and settings transfer wizard and it basically gives you an easy way of transferring files from an old computer. And it tells you what kind of things you can transfer and then it work, it kind of guides you through transferring those onto your new computer. So we get to this stage and then it says that the feature is not implemented. Now there are two final things that I've found that are new in this build. First one is that when you insert a CD you get this new style um, autoplay box. So up until this point the autoplay box has been the XP autoplay box uh, but now we have this new, um, new newly designed one. Um, and the last thing is something which I can't show you because it's basically um, a new style balloon tip or system tray notification. I can't show you this because I, I've, I've be literally been trying all the time I've been using this build to try and get a balloon tip to appear, but alas, they haven't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some screenshots, but what I want you to look at in the screenshots is on the right hand side of the notifications, there is an orange bar and this orange bar um, is actually a timer and rather than in Windows XP where the system tray notifications were static and you had to always close them by pressing the close button as of this build of Longhorn they now have a timeout and they automatically close themselves and there's a visual indication of that by the orange bar on the right hand side and the orange bar basically gets shorter it's like a little progress bar vertical progress bar and it keeps getting shorter until eventually it disappears and that's when the balloon tip closes so have a look at these screenshots which show you that as well So that's it for this video on Longhorn Build 4051 and I will see you next time.